Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking fractal tunnel effect using Adobe After Effects and Mia 3. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels would be fine at a duration of about 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid. So I'm just going to right click create a new solid. I'm going to call this tunnel. Just press OK. Once I've got that, then what I need to do is I need to search for the effect called Mir. Now, just a reminder that Mir 3 is part of the Red Giant package. So please make sure you have that before continuing on with this tutorial. So now that we've got that out of the way, the next thing that we need to do is we need to open up the geometry settings. So I'm just going to change a few things in here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the XYZ value to about 2000. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the bend X and I'm going to change this to let's say 0.2. Now what we've done, if we come over here to rotate Y, is pretty much created a circular kind of tunnel. So now I'm going to change that to 90. And so now we have this tunnel, but it's off center. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the position settings over here and we're just going to try and visually kind of center it. it doesn't have to be perfect just as long as that kind of ankle point is somewhere in there now once i've got that the next thing that we're going to do is i'm just going to go to uh, the size and i'm going to change the xyz linked to xyz individual and then i'm going to re-put the size y back up to 2000 and the size x i'm going to put to 27000 now the size X is just how long the, the tunnel is going to go for. So you need a really high number there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change these vertices X and Y. So I'm going to bump them up to about, let's say 220 and uh, the vertices Y something about 200. Now you can play around with any of these settings. If you want to go even crazier than that, or you want to change some of the bend settings, anything like that you're free to do so so cool moving on so now i'm going to open up the material settings and the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to change the color so i'm just going to color hunt and this is the color palette that i'm using and i really only need these kind of orangey colors i won't really worry about the blue but you, you can use any color that you want but i'm going to start off with this brighter orange so i'm going to put that into my color section for material and then i'm going to change a few things i'm going to come down to reflectivity and i'm going to change that to 16. and again you can play around with any of these settings there's some cool stuff that you can do in there or you can choose some of these presets if you like so once we've done that we can move on and i'm going to open up the shader settings now moving in the shader settings, the thing that we need to change is we're going to come down to the ambient occlusion and I'm going to make sure that that's on and I'm going to change some of the settings here. So the intensity is going to be about 545, the radius is going to be 31, the lift is going to be 0.07 and the scale is going to be 2.8. So cool. So now we've got this funky looking kind of uh, flat kind of image. It doesn't really move just yet, but we're going to make that happen right now. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up the fractal settings. Now in the fractal settings, we're going to change a few things. The first thing is we're going to bump up the amplitude to let's say 107. And then I'm going to bring down the frequency to about 370. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with some of these evolution settings and the offset settings. So you can see what happens here if I move the evolution settings. And we get this really cool kind of wavy effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate that. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch for evolution. Make sure I'm on my first keyframe. Move to the end of my timeline. And then I'm just going to put in a value of let's say 500 and so now we've got some movement happening here so you can see how it's warping and doing all this kind of distorted stuff and again you can do the same for the x offset as well and or the y or the z offset so you can play around with some of those settings but i'll just leave the evolution to animate 
cool. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a light. So I'm just gonna hide that and I'm just gonna right click in here. I'm gonna go to new light and I'm gonna make sure that it's a point light and I'm gonna make sure that the fall off is set to inverse squared clamped and then I'm just gonna press OK. Now you can see what happens here. As soon as I put that in, you get this kind of you know effect that's being applied to the whole fractal tunnel. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up the light settings. So I'm gonna go down to light options. I'm gonna change the radius. I'm gonna bring that up to about 750 or 740 or so. And I'm also gonna change the fall off distance to maybe 490, just bring it down slightly. Now with the lighting, what you need to do is you need to go to the transform settings and you just need to move it around. Like for example, if I move it back kind of in Z space and I move it down the tunnel, you get this kind of cool looking effect. And then once you're happy with that effect, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate that again. So I'm gonna press Command D or Control D to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna open up the settings again, the transform settings, and I'm just gonna move it around. So this one, I want more towards the front and I'm just going to you know, move it off to the side, just like that. Now you can keep on duplicating this as many times as you want, but I'm gonna stick with uh, two lights. Cool. So now once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new camera. So I'm just gonna run with a 50 mil camera. I'm just gonna press okay. Then what I need to do is I need to create a new null object and I'm going to parent the camera to the null object. I'm gonna make sure that the null object is a 3D layer just by clicking that button there. And then what I'm gonna do is on the null object, I'm just gonna press P for position. And now if I just move the Z axis, you can see what happens here. I can actually move through the tunnel. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna animate that. So I'm gonna click on the stopwatch, make sure it's at zero, make sure I'm at the first keyframe, move to the end of the timeline and kind of move forward as much as you like. So it really depends on how fast you want it to go through. And you can see that once it passes the light, you can see the cool effects that kind of happen as well. So I'm pretty happy with that. I just want to kind of slow burn move, moving through the tunnel and I think that's looking pretty cool. The next thing that we can do is we can press R for rotation. And again, we can rotate the tunnel with the Z rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate that. I'm going to click on the stopwatch, move to the end of the composition and just bring that number up to whatever you want. Again, a bigger number means that it's going to rotate more. So I don't want to get too dizzy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it down to like, let's say zero and only 187%. And so now I've got a cool slowish kind of uh, movement through the tunnel. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to go back to the tunnel settings, go all the way down to rendering in our Mi 3 settings. And we're gonna change the depth of field to our camera settings. And then once we've done that, then I'm gonna open up the camera settings and then I'm gonna change the depth of field here. So I'm gonna turn the depth of field on and I'm just going to increase the focus distance. So I'm gonna bring it up to let's say, 3500 and I'm just going to bring up the aperture as well and you can see that depth of field that's being created there and so now you don't have to go too crazy with this I'll actually bring it down to maybe maybe something like that 150 but I think that that's looking pretty cool and now we just need to finish it up so now the final things that we need to do for this is we need to add our adjustment layers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click add a new adjustment layer put it to the top of the composition and I'm gonna search for an effect called glow. Now, you don't wanna to go too crazy with glow. Um, so we're gonna bring down some of these numbers. So the first uh, threshold, I'm gonna bring down to about 10%. Then I'm gonna bring down the radius to about 36. And I'm also going to bring down the glow intensity to let's say 0.8. Now I am going to change the blend mode to let's say overlay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to color hunt and we're going to put these colors in here. So here I am in color hunt and I'm just going to use these two oranges here. 
And then once we've got that, then we can go to the glow colors and we can use those two oranges there. And now we've got this cool kind of fire flame kind of effect happening there. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna duplicate that glow again and we're just gonna change a few settings on the next uh, channel. So we're just gonna bring it down, let's say we'll bring the threshold to about 20. We will bring up the radius to about 107 and we will bring down the glow intensity to let's say 0.5, something like that. And so now you've got this cool kind of flame Thing happening in here and I think it's looking pretty cool but we're gonna go back to the glow operations and we're just going to change that to let's say color dodge and you can even keep those two uh, colors that we used before or you can go back to the original colors but I think I'll just keep the A and B colors over here cool now if you do have deep glow deep glow also works here fantastically uh, but if you don't have deep glow, then you can just follow these glow settings. Now, the final thing that we're going to do here is we're just going to add another new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, we're going to search for the effect called noise. And we're just going to bump up the noise to, let's say, maybe 10%, something like that. And so now that kind of ties it all together. And yeah, that's about it for this quick tutorial. Now you can change some of these settings. You can, you know, one small movement in here, like moving the light will change kind of everything. So you can get really unique and random kind of uh, shapes and tunnels happening here with the Mir 3 plugin. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you guys in the next video.